And welcome back, everybody. Today is July 12th, 2015. I know I've been gone a couple weeks. Family issues, other things like that. But yes, this is The Sunday Dose. My name is Obi-Wan X2, and with me today, we have some some high minds in the retro gaming aspect. We got Yogi Zilla, the man himself. What's up, big boy? Oh, hello there. <laughs> We have uh, the none other, Mr. Fatal Blades. How you doing, Fatal? Doing good and guarding my picnic basket that happens to be Japanese. <laughs> and, Ooh, bento and, box. And the last one, he's one of our, our teammates on on our uh, CSGO team, uh, CZ. How you doing, man? Doing pretty good. That's awesome. You? I'm doing great. I know, guys, it's been a couple weeks since we've been on here. Um... Supposed to have it last week, finished up the girl gaming aspect of it, and then started a little bit on the retro gaming. I had some stuff that I had to take care of IRL that just could not wait. I actually had to take care of it. Had some family issues, and yeah, so we'll leave it at that. But we are here today. We're ready to rock and roll. Now, we're going to be talking about something today that basically all of us really love. Even CZ, and he's the young, young one of the group. Um, but it's retro gaming, guys. Um, there's a lot of things, a lot of games that have that come out long time ago, and and actually are still played today. We're gonna talk about those. We're gonna talk a bit about some, uh, some a little bit of retro news. Uh, we'll give you basically it's a few few pieces of news that, uh, and then we'll just kind of talk about it a few minutes. Won't be that long, and then we'll get right into the retro talk. But first we, want to make, first, we want to make sure that uh, we give good shout-outs to, of course, GeekyAntics.net. Good-looking gamers and prior previous guest on the show, Thor DG, Pyro Insane, Locksmith, Goalie Man for the Win, Link Wall, and, of course, you guys in chat. Now, I do want to give big shout-outs to a, a, a gamer that's grown his community, and he's got a really good and positive community, which, which really... The first time I met them were just, they were, wow, this is how a community should be kind of thing. So you guys want to go check them out. That is Gunnin Gamers. You guys can check them out. He's actually streaming right now, um, but he does, you know, all the simulator games like I do, Farm Sim. He does the Hunter, which I'm going to be getting into uh, myself. He, uh, uh, Euro Truck Simulator, if you guys think that's stupid, go watch him stream that when he's drunk. It's really funny. So... Go check them out. That's Gun and Gamers, and that's Gamers with a Z on the end. But further ado, guys, we're going to get right into it. Um, as before, <clears throat> the Sunday Dose is moving into, um, I want to say kind of the, you know, the, the roundtable discussion, just because I want everybody to have, even though I'm the only one talking right now, I want everybody to have their point. I want everybody to have their, and I just want to get into a conversation, even if it's about one thing. So, what's up, Shadow? How you doing, buddy? Welcome. First question of the day, guys. And I do this a lot. I even did it with my wife sitting across. Side boob, under boob, or cleavage? Which one is it, boys? I guess I'll go first. <laughs> There's three I... seconds we can cut out of there. <laughs> I'll go with the, the under boob. I don't know. There's a, the side boob is nice. Mm-hmm. But something about the, the, it's the, the undershot, oh, like the underskirt shot that the Japanese uh, have perfected, and then getting the under boob shot as the shirt slowly moves up mm-hmm. is uh, quite provocative to me. Great, yes. Also, yes. Smite, Smite Physics Engine, yeah, Boob Physics OP. Yeah, that's true, because them some bitches do bounce. Yeah, new, have you seen Nuwa? Now that's under boob and a ham. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have. Fatal? Um, I can definitely support the underboob theory because that's one jumping jack away from victory. But anyone listening, I'd like to offer that they tweet directly at Obi with the uh, hashtag TSD and put in the other hashtag, hashtag topless option that I am much more a fan of. Well, you got to think about it, too, that they, you act, they, you'd actually see this out in public. Okay. I mean, you Again, actually see. I'm all for the hashtag topless option. Okay. <laughs> I, 
Send it, guys. I'm telling you. Hashtag topless option. Well, if we get enough tweets, we'll actually we'll put that in next week. How's that? We'll take we'll eliminate one and then we'll put the topless in. And I guarantee that's gonna win every week though. <laughs> yeah, it will. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't leave anything to an imagination. Plus, you know, let's look, be honest. I play D and D because I have an imagination. I look at boobs because I want to see boobs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's. Sometimes though, it's better to see the partial boob than the full boob because you may not be as as excited. Sadly, this is the reality of being old and realizing what happens to our bodies. Right. Like, oh, this is not as good as I imagined it in my head. <laughs> right. Well, I was frantically, you know, I was frantically uh, moving around this week and trying to taking care of things, and then gaming, and then you know, we're 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 making strides with the CS:GO team, which is really cool. I'm having lots of fun doing that, and of course, Fatal's the the team manager. Um, so it's 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 to the point where I'm thinking about it, and I totally forget. I'm like, what the hell am I going to talk about this week? So we're going to put it off, and then something happened that I couldn't be here for. So then I said, well, we're just going to put it off and we'll just do it Sunday and actually do it on Sunday because then I can get back on that every other week. Um, and there's a pay-per-view next weekend. So it's kind of um, – that's not the real reason, though, I promise. <laughs> um, right. Everybody's silent at the wrong time. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even cool, guys. What the hell? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm tinkering on stuff on our, on our website. I'm uh, I'm trying to figure out something magical. Website is co-word for destiny. And no, no, <laughs> no. And we're gonna. Actually been good. I only put an hour that today. We're gonna bring somebody else in the chat that I know has played retro games and loves playing retro games. I be loud. What's up, baby? Good talk. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's how you doing? I'm right here. How's, How's it going? going? Cricket. I like the irony of that no, introduction. It was I be right loud. Here. I'm right you be here. quiet. <laughs> That's not fair. It is too. <laughs> Should say I be trolling. <laughs> she <laughs> she pig she poked me. She goes, hey, I something. What'd you say? I love newbies or something. I like boobs. Oh, I like boobs. Boobs. The boobs. But he said noobs. Boobs are good. I mean, I, I'm not gay. I, I like the you know the D I C K. The but... D. Um, I mean, a beautiful woman will make me stop and go, damn, I mean, lusciousness. They're just I delicious. like the D-I-C-K too, especially the Van Dyke variety. He's hilarious. He has his moments. Who is that? Hey, he could dance. Somebody's he landing in an break airplane dancing. right now. <laughs> hey, Dick Van Dyke no... invected. Oh, Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, that was yeah. a really sly undercover freak. I'm just saying, he invented breakdancing. It wasn't the Asians, it wasn't the Blacks, it wasn't Latinos. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke did. That's just retro watch. right there, buddy. I, see, I don't know. I, I I credit Vin Diesel. He has proof in the 80s. Oh, man. For oh my inventing gosh. the dick? What? No, for <laughs> what breakdancing. Are you wow, oh, she's still thinking about dick what right now. Man, I'm sorry. See, you say Vin Diesel, and if I'm not thinking multifacial, see, I'm thinking Riddick, and it's see, girl. See, CZ came back. <laughs> what the hell did I come back into? <laughs> for real. What is even going on? Well, guys, there are a few times. <laughs> well, <clears throat> there's a few topics that we're just going to kind of get to. You guys can check out that link in the show notes right there. Um, it's from <clears throat> retrocollect.com, uh, forward slash news, forward slash retro. You guys can check out any of these that you want to. I'm just going to read a couple off and tell me what you guys kind of think a little bit. Okay. Right? We will uh, do that. Go for it. With minimal dead air. With minimal dead air. So we're dead basically air. the whole time dead we're going to go Yogi, Fatal, C or I be loud, CZ, or write down the thing. Fatal, start with you, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Ready. <laughs> Ready. Go. Are you ready? Fight. Capcom licensed Street Fighter 2 original soundtrack to be remastered, headed to collectible vinyl and CD. You guys gonna Love get it. one? Um, I'm I sorry, did you speak English? What did you just say? I, <laughs> I might get it. Capcom, I, I am gonna Capcom, get it, because it's gonna be on vinyl, and I still have a record player, so... Whatever. That yeah, would be cool, I'm actually. To, uh, uh -huh. Young for, uh... 
record player. You don't even know they, what a vinyl they is. They said you? CD no, too, yeah, I but know you may is. be too young for that as well. <laughs> they said, I, I'm not that. I'm not that young. <laughs> You're like, is that like what's a CD? It's like an MP3 yeah, I, you I, can I hold. I only know. It's an MP3 you can hold. Well, to be fair, CDs had a relatively short run if you think about it. Oh yeah, dude. Because then the flash drives came, the bigger hard drives, all the other, the, you know, yeah. the sound clouds and all that other shit came really, really fast. I mean, you still get CDs now, but like. You buy a CD it had a people... chance. It wasn't Betamax. I mean, well, but now it's it's it's, yeah. it's the same with the games with gamers. It's this, you know, with the the music lovers, they're not going to go look, go to the store, and go to the mall and get the CD. And I'm just going to put out, you know, buy ACDC that they just put out. They're going to download it from their from iTunes, or they're going to download it offline just because they can get it more likely cheaper or even free. Yeah, but yep. then there's those douchey hipsters who go to Hot Topic and get all the newest albums in vinyl just to be like, guess what I got in vinyl? Uh, right. They, well, but that's know, that's squeakily that's... clean their their hipster glasses. But that's but that's that's one of those <laughs> that's one of those things that I would do the same thing just because it's collectible. You know what I mean? Because if you have something like that to where if it's ACDC from the time they start up till present, and you have it on vinyl. Dude, you know how much that shit's worth? If it's taken care of. Well, you yeah. know what I'm saying, but I'm saying if it's a collector, then they're going to get those things. They're going to be like, I got this on vinyl, hell yeah. Brand new album. Plus, there's a certain kind of uh, sound quality that you can't get anywhere else other than like vinyl. Mm -hmm. That little crackly kind of effect that it gets is, is cool. It's like certain films have this, a certain film grain, and it's like, oh, that's neat. And they try to recreate it, but it's just something about it that... They can't recapture, you know? Right. Unless they're using that specific medium and not, not trying to fake it. Right. True, um, true. Well, and... and Yeah, anyway, I'm, I've, I've got vinyls. <laughs> I lost what I was going to say. I so you. wanted to go, squeak, squeak, squeak. I entirely yeah. agree. <laughs> yeah. Squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> squeak, squeak. Yeah. Um, I lost total <laughs> what I was going to say. So next one. The next one is going to be... I'm hyped as soon as I found one. it. Somebody has hacked the Nintendo 64 control pad to work with the Xbox One. Do you want one? Oh, you jumped to a different area. <laughs> Man, it, and no, no. That was a horrible I design love for it. its day. It was a horrible, like, it only really worked for that system. Not a fan. The C buttons would basically be your secondary stick. That would be rough. Yeah, that would, that would... You'd have to hold the one button in to, yeah, that would be really rough. That that would be rough. Yogi. Um, some people say that that the Nintendo sixty four controller was the best one, one of the best ever made. Mm -hmm. Um, those people are also um, dealing with serious drug issues. So, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> No, it, you know. Wow. It, That's all I can say is wow. You, no, you no, know no. what we used to call that controller? I kid you not. Like back at when the Nintendo 64 was still new, we looked at the controller and we used to joke with our friends that it was the three dongs of death. <laughs> yeah, right. Did you just say dongs and you're talking about me and dicks? What? Yeah, like, like, like seriously, hold, hold wow, you're a still on D's. Yeah. N64 like, controller. You feel like you're trying to milk a horse, all right? The horse has been properly milked. Oh my god. Wow. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and milk the cow. We don't have a cow. We have a bull. Don't Wait. eat breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Rocky Whoa. Mountain oysters. <laughs> oysters. I hear that's how uh, the porn stars prep for their work eating oysters. Too yeah. soon? No? Okay. <laughs> Way wow. soon. There's, there's, there's no I, more I'm news. actually contemplating. I'm like, this could be true, so I don't know if I want to call him on it. There, there's no more news. We're, we're it's, not like even... game, it's like what? a game show where, like, what was that, that old game show where uh, you have, uh, so, so, what is it, uh, three people say, it's like two lies and a, and a, and a truth. Oh, Are yeah, they... to tell the truth. Yeah, and like, one person explains what a thing is, and you know, you know, they all explain what the thing is, but you know, the person has to go with one that he thinks is the truth, 
And if it's the wrong one, he gets uh, shocked in a chair. Oh. <laughs> oh no, that's a totally dick. To tell the truth was like, they tell a story and one person has to tell the truth and it's actually them and two other people can BS their way around it. That was the American version, and I think the Canadian yeah. version came first. You know, the, leave, leave it to the Canadians to put people in an electric chair. And then, but wait, uh, before we had news, how are you going to skip the Shinmu documentary? I didn't skip that. How dare you? I, I was going to let you bring that up because Dude. I was just going to, yeah. So That's... good, like, especially we're talking the retro gaming and the Dreamcast had Shenmue, and now they're fighting for uh, Shenmue to be the, the new, the Shenmue 3 could very possibly be getting seen on PlayStation 4, I believe it was what they announced at E3. Right. Because they're going to be trying to support that Kickstarter. Uh, but they're doing, they, they've released the teaser for A Gamer's Journey, the definitive history of Shenmue documentaries. So, I mean, if you're into those documentaries like I am and you watch the Atari one and like the history of Tetris and stuff, that's going to be... I, I'm looking forward to that. I was a big fan of Shenmue, and I'm yeah. a big fan of documentaries, so it kind of hits that sweet spot. Right. Definitely. And, but, and to be clear, Shenmue is going to be on PC and, and PS4. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, it'll, it'll find its way back to the to the Xbox, which is the spiritual successor of the Dreamcast. And see, 91 Proof knows what's up. Dreamcast, best controller ever made. I might have to agree with the little VMU support. And... Um... I have to disagree. It was like holding yeah. hamburger. See, I like that. Like, I like the freaking UFO controller on the Sega Saturn with the dual analog. Where you could play Knights, the one that came bundled with Knights. You probably yeah. like the old, like, hamburger original Xbox one, too, huh? Oh, yeah. I, I, I got the attachment for it that uh, gives you the back brace. You yeah. know? It has, like, the little thing where you get, like, attached it to your abdomen, and then it has back support as well. So you, oh, yeah. you're supporting it with your midsection. Really good. Really good. You have to, like, discus throw it every now and again. That's how you got your workout before the, the Kinect ever came around. Well, playing with the Xbox controller, I really, before they came out with the S-Type, the original Xbox controller, I just used, used to kind of, like, I started to tighten up my abs, to be honest, like, in my, in my pecs. I was like, damn, they're, they're not as jiggly now. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I miss the system. So you can curls. bench press. So jingle and baby, go ahead, baby. So jingle and baby. <laughs> Hello, Cool J. Ah, good times before hip hop went to crap. That that's retro right there too. <laughs> yeah, that's, we, that's completely see? retro. Ninety one proof. See, he, he's speaking the truth. It was ahead of his time. That system was ahead of his time. If that that system, if Sega didn't take risks with that and just basically taking it up the ass, they got gang bangs so everybody else could succeed. That's what happened. They took all the freaking facials and anal gaping so everybody else, you know, could, could have it easy. Well, Sega's apparently been busy as hell. Sega's right up there with Cartman's mom. What the hell? Whoa. Did you, <laughs> what? Oh, damn. What's yeah, that? Why That's you gotta talk shit about... the Denver Broncos. Why you, gotta talk shit, why you gotta talk shit about Cartman's mom, man? Oh, snap. She just wants to lay down with the kitty. <laughs> yeah. And everything else. It's the meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. Yeah. Man, Whoa! Baby Breaking baby news, dick. Nintendo's CEO passed away? You talking about uh, Shigeru Miyamoto? Miyamoto? That was no. a while ago. No. no. No, it wasn't Nintendo CEO. No, they just released something. I didn't see this come through in the press, re press releases. And no, I'm subscribed like, to no. every marketing and PR list there is. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It might be... It might be a hoax. Oh, whoa. Satoru oh, Saturo, uh, Iwata. Oh, okay. he's the, that's right. He's the president. He's the CEO. That's right. Um, yeah, you were talking about the president. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But he's the, yeah. But yeah, he's, 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 he's also been, uh, Iwata being more, more uh, on the forefront anyway. No, he's, he can be the he's the president and CEO. Is I'd he? rather be the Pope. Did you know Miyamoto was the guy that invented uh, Mario, no? Mm. I don't think he's been involved actively with Nintendo for a while. Yeah, that has to be. No way, this might be true because it's an IGN. Oh, damn. Age 55, that's young, man. Holy crap, I'm right behind him then. <laughs> Later. I mean... Oh, crap. So yeah, wow. He he uh was battling a, a a growth discovered in his on his bile duct. That's no good. Mm. He didn't look sickly either. Like see, that's the thing. That stuff can sneak up on you, man. 
Right. Wow. That that really uh that really is a uh a, a, a sad news actually. Well, I just took down the check completely. Now I feel like I can't be funny after that. I know. Yeah, well, you might feel that way, but I'm saying. Well, sucks to be him. Right here. Let's go, guys. Retro gaming talk right here. Um, and I'm not being a dick to this guy, but sucks to be him. <laughs> Whatever, not nothing to do with me. Retro gaming, guys. We want to get into a good discussion. Now, this is for everybody, for those in chat that are actually want to participate in this. We will actually read you off and read your name and, you know, all that good jazz. But uh, everybody add into it. For those that are listening to the podcast in the future here, send us a message. You guys can send us a message at geeky, uh, ob1x2 at geekyantics.net or mail at geekyantics.net and I'll get it. So first thing is, guys, retro gaming. What? Retro? Ro -ro? Yeah, retro. Ro -ro. <laughs> retro gaming. Retro raggy. Yeah. Retro raggy. I'm gonna let Fatal and uh, and, and Yogi take a little bit of this uh, this 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 point right here. What are yeah? There you go, Yogi. What are retro <laughs> games? Right, you want to start it, Yogi? Retro games. All right. So this is a point of contention. Yeah, you so have the you have the purists that say it's gotta be 16-bit or older. None of the retro stylized games and. Uh, None of the other crap that like the stuff that's been released years later, like uh, there's still stuff being released for Sega Genesis, uh, even Dreamcast, even Nintendo, if, yeah, NES. Yep, there's still projects out there. There's Kickstarters out there. There's indie projects, so community projects. Um, the stuff that comes up on Project Dolphin, which is the what is it, the GameCube and Nintendo 64 emulator? Yeah, Dolphin's the uh, the GameCube emulator. I thought they also did. Uh, N64 too. They might have. I used a different one. Anyway, not beside the <laughs> point. That's beside the point. Hey, nothing wrong with emulation as long as you own the original cart. Wait, Which wait. I do. As a matter of fact, I saw the 64 hooked up in the living room. Yep. I mean, the thing is, it's much easier to emulate. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. Now, what's your take on what, what are retro games? And then I'll give mine. Epic, for purposes of streaming... I think five years or older, you could kind of go there. But, when, you know, when I do the Retro Friday stuff, it's something to throw back Thursday. I, th I, I kind of stick to 8-bit and 16-bit. And then, like, kind of like that, whatever's on that cusp of the 5th and 6th generation. Because if you look at fifth, the 5th fifth gen of consoles, you had 32-bit systems, like the early 32-bit system. And you also still had 16-bit stuff. And there was, it was like the very beginning of 3D. So I think I I would personally I would cut it off at uh at Dreamcast, but that's because I'm biased. I say two generations behind the current generation. That's a much simpler way, yeah. Yeah. Two generations behind I'd, the current generation. So I'd say for three. Me, retro gaming is PlayStation two and earlier now, and uh Xbox original, Xbox. original yeah. and back. I'd say I'd, buy that. I'd say three. Like anything pre PlayStation One. See, but I count there's still some on the PlayStation One I consider retro. Right. Like, well, uh, and, and we'll you know. we'll talk about this at a later date of what you know it's another point, but yeah, I could see that I guess. Uh, uh, CZ or Ivy Loud, you guys want to throw down on this one? I so got lost because we got distracted with the death of the the the. Of the... Oh, wait a minute. What's considered retro? See. For games, for games. What? Yeah, oh, yeah, retro. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> I was thinking about it, and then my mind wandered. To me, I've seen some new stuff that, I mean, it's brand new, and they went total retro vibe. So that's where I have a hard time with the purists, because, I mean, there's new stuff that they went 8-bit. Or if you just looked at it, you would think it was retro, vintage, and it's not. Mm -hmm. Oh, see that? See, you just hit the nail on the head because I think there's a distinction. Yeah, because I, I retro... mean, if you make it look like retro, yeah, that don't mean it is retro because that code can be a hot mess with memory leaks and it's just, it's no. Mm -mm. I think retro means that you literally worked with the technology that was in like the 80s before the millennia and between that time period and you made a kick butt game. 
Like, yeah. I think it's based on the technology. Because if you're if you're making something that has a retro look, with what we have to use today, that's cheating. I'm sorry, dude. That's cheating. so you've got you can't kind of go by looks. Purist. Well, it's more along the lines of like I think that's straight out cheating because you don't have the same challenges. So I mean, anybody can take the technology that's going now, make something you know kind of eight bit lookish, and it's not true retro because they have functionality in it that you couldn't have done back in the day. It just, do you know, they, that's a cheat to me. I'm sorry. Well, I think the distinction, and I feel like we've had this conversation before. I don't know if it was here or another one of our podcasts, but the thing is a big difference between retro as like, I think retro is the big bucket. And then you have classics, right? Like, you know, it's kind of like you look at a golden age of comics, you know, those are classics, but you can still go, you can still go a little more, a little more current, and it'll still be retro because it's older, you know, because it's a few generations behind it, and the styles have changed a lot since then, right? Like each era has a def- different kind of vibe that defines it. So I think, you know, retro is the overall thing because you can have retro stylized games, you know, retro classics, mm-hmm. and you can have um, kind of like the tribute games that try hard to recreate that feel of a retro game, you know that. Because the ones that just are stylized, like in presentation, like you're saying they cheat, they make it look pixelated or they use sprites to make it look like it's a retro game, but obviously it, it, they could push things that you couldn't do back in those days. Those are not, those are kind of borderline, and the purists would definitely scoff at those. But the ones that look at, like Shovel Knight, they look at what could have been possible back then, you know, and try to recreate that, but give it a little more scope, you know, take advantage of the power of the, power of the current hardware without going too overboard. Those are definitely, I think they deserve to be called retro. Now, what about someone who did it successfully during the retro era, but is creating a new game, such as uh, 20XX? Oh, it's a good game, too. The, the Mega Man uh, tribute kind of game. Right, but it's actually coming out from, you know, the Mega Man folks, and now it's a new game in Mega Man style, but they did it back then, and now they're bringing it, and it's still going to be kind of, like not really eight, like more sixteen bit ish, but they were doing it back then too. Mm. That's why I think there's so much gray area when people talk about what defines the retro games. I don't necessarily think the retro. Like I consider the more by style, like um, sometimes always monsters or you know thirty second hero or whatever or sixty second hero to be like indie like i think there's like new indie with the retro feel and then there's retro yeah like i said i think retro is just an overall label that we use but then when you talk about like i think some people when they say retro they really mean like the classics like going back because like in the chat they're like ps2 they wouldn't include as retro because it feels like it's still too recent and and another thing that makes it obscure is because there's so many ports you see from previous generations coming over uh, so it make it, it makes that line even more blurry, you know, because you can have a game that was released on a more current console that's definitely retro and vice versa. It's like it's weird, but I don't know. I I think uh, I think that yeah, two generations. I think it definitely for overall. I think that's pretty fair. No, definitely. yes, maybe. <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, and why do we have to have it like? I'm not even understanding the distinction of retro because you've got new games that are supposed to be the hotness and I mean the Atari kills them so when we're saying retro can we define literally are we talking gameplay are we talking programming languages used are we talking what are we talking oh you're getting too deep on this we're we're talking like the consumer doesn't care about that yeah, we're we're we're, we're, we're talking about we're talking about just game retro games and gaming in general. Not as in we we can get deep on that at some point if you guys want to, but we have a lot to talk about. So <laughs> we can can't... I'll keep retro as being anything made before the millennia. Well, I say with and somebody kind of said it to, you know, the that you know, PS2 was not really retro. 
um, everything, and I said it wrong when I was saying it earlier, I think it's PS1 and down, not anything below the PS1 uh, would be the the retro, because that's, but that's when kind of it started that moving Dreamcast? into, no, that's after Dreamcast. See, because I almost think that's when the game changed. When Dreamcast left, mm -hmm. I think that's when the game changed. Right. Now, another question, and I'm going to start with CZ this time, because he's the youngest uh, in this little endeavor. And actually, we're gonna uh, we're gonna invite one more person to the show. Um, we're gonna invite uh, Shadow Wolf. He's a uh, a younger brother of one of our uh, one of the gang members. So, Shadow, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Good, and, and I just <laughs> warn you next time because I'm watching the, the stream as well. Okay, I'm gonna have to move you out then. All right. <laughs> what? yeah that was cool um <laughs> but uh what? yeah <laughs> that was it was like perfect timing <laughs> like oh my god my brother's on the show um guys the next question i want to ask you guys and i'm going to speak with cz and yep. shadow yeah. first and then i'll let you the older guys and the, i'm not saying older the lovely loud answer but why play why retro play games? CZ? Well, for, for one, they're a lot harder than modern games. They give you a challenge that most games don't really give you. Modern games don't really give you anymore. That's one point of mine. Right? Yeah. Shadow, what about you, buddy? Well, I thought you were talking about the chat. Or did you bring him back in? No, he's there. Oh, okay, there we go. I wasn't looking. Maybe. Yeah? Maybe not. Um, uh, Loud? Miss Loud? What about you? Why play retro games? Um, Me, personally, I mean, if I had my Dreamcast back and I had, you know, Soul Calibur, oh. I'd play it. Um, yeah. If I had my House of the Dead on my old Xbox, I'd play it. It would be very much dictated by a game that I can't get on a current system that was my go-to on a bad day. And uh, otherwise than that, I mean, I played them to death then. Like, you can't find a really decent um, Tempest, and that really needs to be played almost on an on a, you know, arcade-style setup because you got, you know, the spin ball, you know, you got the spin dial and everything. But I wanted to have, like, you know, some of the more updated, you know, graphics. I like taking old things and, and paying homage. But I don't necessarily like living in the past. So I can't really say I'm a big retro freak. Does that make sense? Right. And and, and, and I'll take this before the, the, uh, the, the old guys get it. Um, <clears throat> when I'm just as old. But anyway, <laughs> um, I play retro games because of, like, just in general, the replay value. If I bought them a long time ago, and I still play them today, <clears throat> most of you guys know when I buy a game, I want to get at least five dollars, or it's five hours per dollar that I spend on that game. If I don't get that much, if I don't get that much time on the game, it was a waste for me. Even though I might have played two hundred and fifty hours, if the game was sixty bucks, then I got fifty hours to go. So, like when I'm playing retro games like that, and I still play. Super Nintendo. We play Wii. I mean, I know it's Wii, but we play Super Mario Brothers. <clears throat> the old, you know, the old school Super Mario Brothers. They made the pack for the Wii, and we bought it. Um, we play that all the time. Uh, there's some other ones that I actually play on my PC still uh, that I've, you know, found that I have to give you guys some links <laughs> to play with me. <laughs> so, um, But that's why I play it. It's just the replay value that you can get out of these games. Um, not just that. I mean, I just, I just enjoy playing them. Something like CZ said. I mean, uh, and we were talking before the show, and, and Fatal's like, well, there's a game out there right now. You get three lives. You get hit once, there's your armor. You get hit twice, you're dead. That's it. I mean, you were done. There's no saves, no nothing. Mm -hmm. But those kind of games, like what CZ said earlier, was they're, they're, they're difficult. They're challenging. Now, you can save any time you want. I mean, you can... Take a step, save. Take a step, save. I mean, if you really want to. 
back then you had save points. Like you had to get halfway through the map to, or all the way through the map to save it. Um, Mario Brothers is is one that you know Mar Super Mario Brothers World, uh, where you actually have to run by the flag. That's your save point. Um, you know, that's what that's that's why I play retro games anyway. Yogi. Yeah, I think this. You know, uh, there's certainly people that go back and play retro games because they're nostalgia, uh -huh. and they're they're playing the games with nostalgic goggles on. So that's what that they still enjoy the games because it brings them back to better times. But I think there's a certain magic with games. Uh, I think developers used to be more talented back in the days because they had to learn to work around the limits of their platform, and that got them innovating. Now. It's so easy to become a developer, to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the stuff is done WYSIWYG. You don't really need to know tr troubleshooting much math or physics or anything like that. You know, it used to be that if you were a developer, you had to be an astrophysicist, uh, you know, uh, good at geometry, good at calculus, but you also have to be an artist. And, like, who has that skill set? Like, really, you're creative and also, <clears throat> you know, good at <clears throat> mathematics, you know, science and math. You know, it's, <clears throat> it's weird. <clears throat> now it's not so much. Now you have ver it's very uh, you know s separated. It's, it's, uh, they they compartmentalize the the development process, mm -hmm. and I think that because of that, a, a lot of the games have lost some of their magic and uh, the 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 creativity and innovation as a whole. On on the gameplay side, yeah, the games used to. I feel like they used to be more challenging and they hold your hand as much, uh, and and it, and it was more satisfying to progress in them because. You, you figured things out. It was like it was, most games, you know, especially 16-bit era and earlier, uh -huh. it was like solving a puzzle. You know, once the 32-bit era started coming around, you know, it, it was more, uh, a little more about action and adventure and less about thinking. Graphics uh, got better, started getting better. Yeah, and they, and they started playing more with that. So, Multiplayers you know, like, started coming out. Dreamcast, yeah, multiplayer started becoming big too. And mm -hmm. I think Dreamcast... It's probably pushing when if you really want to be pure about uh, about retro because they kind of ushered in gaming as it is today. The only thing that's really changed since the Dreamcast came out is like the 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 polish of the games and how much better the games look. But if you look at each other era before that, every each other console generation, the games there was different kinds of things you see that you were like, wow, this this was really ahead of its time, you know. Mm -hmm. There's just something magical about the scene, like where games started off. You know, like uh, games like uh, Elite that like kind of invented the open world uh, experience, or you know, the early RTS games like Dune or Desert Commander or Herzog, uh, which is a you know you could say is also the grandfather of, of MOBAs. Um, you know, there's just a lot of neat things that happen. Uh, if you look at the original point and click adventure games, you know, like the King Quest games and you know, Sam and Max and, you know, Laser Shoot Larry, you know. Now I played the shit out of Laser Shoot Larry. <laughs> oh, hell Sorry. yeah. Because Homeboy was a pimp. I don't care. Well, it's interesting. He was look rocking how... the boobies, bro. But look how cyclical it's becoming now because yeah, I think we're finally at a point where, the, like, if you look at the prices of retro stuff, it's super expensive. The mm -hmm. prices are really high right now. It's always, there's always an ebb and flow, but they're at the highest they've been at. For like I would say a decade easily. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, championship edition uh, of uh, Zelda, the the, the cart, the, the Nintendo World Championship game cartridge. There was only I don't know. There's only like a handful of them in the world. It's something ridiculous. I'm like like 50 or 100, and they all have individual serials and dip switches and all this stuff. If you have one of those, you can sell it for 35k easily. Uh, and then, like you know, the, I, I I think I saw in GameStop they had Sonic 2. Which I still have in the cartridge, you know, CIB, you know, with a complete in the box, as they call it, for collectors. Yeah. They were selling it for forty-five bucks. Really? <laughs> and if I'm you like... were to if you were to bring yours into there, they'd offer you five dollars for it. Oh yeah, fuck them. I or would, or I a dollar sell... or a dollar, yeah. literally. They have such a ma massive markup. I, you got to go direct if you're gonna sell that stuff, you know, because they, they 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 go by the book value. A collector is gonna give you. Whatever it, you know, you ask them for if they feel think it's re reasonable, you know, you could bargain with them. Right. Don't, don't, don't sell your retro stuff to GameStop. Fuck that. Fuck them in the ear. Let them go to that route of Blockbuster. Anyway, I don't All know right. what I was saying. But, uh... <laughs> All right, he's back. Fatal. Uh, hold your okay. thought one second. 
Uh, Shadow, how about you, buddy? What? Why? Why play retro games? You being one of the young guys. If I'm like really bored with the new games, I'm like, this is too easy. Yeah, you know, I have to go play Zelda or something. <laughs> All right, I think he was having cat at background noises. So, Fatal, uh, what about you, buddy? You young whippersnappers. No, uh, honestly, yeah. I I look at retro gaming because it's always good to know where something you with something you really enjoy it's good to know where it came from uh there's a lot of people i talk to about you know oh they love the the metroidvania genre and then i'm like well have you played metroid or castlevania and they're like well, no what Why game is I? that it's like but that's that's where your favorite genre comes from right you know the the old platformers or you know there's always that early innovation that leads to something new i remember when people talked about certain like there was a game mode in black ops 2 and it was a top-down shooter and everyone was like this is so original and it's so cool and all my friends want to play it and i'm like dude it's smash tv <laughs> and they're like what no it's not what, what? What what smash TV and I'm like okay first off you need to go educate yourself like, and you need to get off this game because you're too young to play it pick up a console and, and educate yourself but if you don't know where gaming kind of started and and you don't understand the earlier struggles in gaming coming into the new gaming I I watched so many things where people were like. Dark Souls is the hardest game ever, and, and Bloodborne, it's an impossible game. Dude, I will put you on the speeder bike level of Battletoads and watch you cry. <laughs> yeah. Screw Bloodborne. Screw Dark Souls, okay? Restart Battletoads 200 times trying to figure out the pattern for speeder bike that moves quicker than you can react, so if you don't already have it memorized, you're dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, it drives me nuts. I also like that even in those older games, they are still finding new things. So, like, again, back to Battletoads. It wasn't until right about two years ago when someone did a task bot run mm -hmm. that they figured out there was a glitch in the speeder bike level. Early on, when you hop on the speeder bike, it slows down and you can actually jump off the level and glitch it to where you can beat the game at that point but it's so perfectly you have to hit it so perfectly that it will actually mess with the hexadecimal coding and put you at the end of the game oh god but they didn't find that till two years ago and this game has been out easily 20 like what 15 years at when least they, almost when they two decades dude that, 18 years yeah, so, I mean, it was out 18 years, and then they found it. So there's still people finding things in older games currently. So I think that's kind of one of those things. Is it goes back to what, uh, you know, Yogi said about the way, you know, the way that it's got, it, it had the challenge and the puzzle aspect that we don't really have anymore. And I like that it challenged. It didn't just give you everything. It didn't raise a generation of entitled gamers like I feel the current generation is doing. Oh, God, it is. You know, like <laughs> everyone gets on, on a game, and I think that might be part of what leads to the toxic ideals, is that people feel entitled. They're like, oh, I bought this game. I should be able to do whatever I want with it, even if that is making your life miserable, even though well, you purchased the game. But, you know, honestly, the generation above that our generation made them that way because you have a lot of people in gaming who don't know jack about technology, really don't know anything about gaming, just woke up one day and said, I'm going to build a video game and be famous because they have money and they're bored. And you've got freemium models out there for all the wrong reasons. You've got not well conceived games being developed that never get finished they get in the weeds and then they got to do like downloadable content because they promised some crap not realizing what the heck they just said 
I mean, how how can they how can these kids be like that if there weren't adults out there making them products for them to get that way? True. I mean, that's true too. I just I hate the idea that people think, oh, because I bought the game, like I'm not gonna buy the game if it's not easy enough for me to beat in a weekend. You know, and and then we get games that are like, okay, cool. I just spent sixty dollars for a game a that I beat in six five hour gaming experience with no multiplayer. Well, I can throw that piece of shit in a fire. No multiple endings, no anything else. They give me six hours of gaming content for sixty dollars, and four hours of that is CGI cutscenes that I could give two shits less about. So the second time you play it is actually instead of six hours, it takes you three and a half. If you can skip the cutscenes. Yeah, but I'm saying, yeah. Not all of them let you. Some of them are like, well, since you paid for it, you're basically going to get this movie worth of CGI. Which no gamer wants. All right, moving on, guys, because I see a whole bunch of people throwing out their favorite games right now in chat. So what I want to ask you guys, we'll start with Fatal right on down the line. What is your all-time favorite retro game? Fatal Blades. And I only get to pick one? Yes, all-time. Oh. <laughs> this is going to be hard. Yeah, don't, don't start with me. Well, while Fatal, <laughs> while Fatal and everybody's thinking about their favorite retro games, I'm going to read, some, uh, read through chat a little bit, and we're going to go on and we're going to, you know, uh, 91 Pro, 91 Proof, uh, well, he were, they were talking about retro, totally uh, Minecraft, totally retro. I'm afraid that's probably not. But the second one that you did say, Duke Nukem, great, great game. Uh, CZ's, uh, well, I'll let him say that here in a second. Um, I see that uh, Trevor come off and said in chat, my favorite retros are probably Star Fox 64, Banjo, and Kazooie. Those are really, I like Kazooie too. Um Let's see a couple more down here, of course. You Battletoads, we were talking about that. I think that was one of everybody's favorite. Um, let's see, who else? Did I miss anybody that said their game? If you guys want to say your games, I think Ghouls and Ghost is easier. Yeah. Battle BFT also said uh, Double Dragon uh, and Battletoads for Life. Definitely. Yeah, Fatal, have you thought about your... Favorite I, retro game? It, it, it's a super hard call. Like it is it, <laughs> because of all the retro gaming I do. I don't. Okay, know give me give me your top five. Just ben. give me your top five. Top five. Yep. Castlevania Two: Simon's Quest. Okay. Goldeneye on the Nintendo sixty four. There you go, CZ. I'm gonna say. Oh, there was a fighting game on the Sega Saturn. Pit Pit Vipers. Uh. Fighting Vipers. Fighting Vipers, thank you. And mm, Space Channel 5 on the Dreamcast. Oh, one yes. and two. Damn. And I guess for my fifth one, I would have to say Chippendale's Rescue Rangers on the NES. Wow. Yeah, uh, Yogi. I like his choices. Yogi, <laughs> your top five, sir. I want to do favorite. Shit. Hi, <laughs> you knew you were going first. Okay, uh, this is like no particular order, and this list will change. It's subject to change at any time. Definitely, Battletoads is up there. Lots of fond memories with that. Playing it legit, and also playing hacking it up with the Game Genie and making up codes. Definitely. I found a code that turned you into blobs, and whenever you got hit, it was pretty weird. Didn't really do anything other than like it made you to a blob, and couldn't really do anything for a little while until you turned back to a regular Toad. Okay. So that's pretty. That's pretty neat. But uh, Battle is definitely up there. Uh, I like. I like. Uh, I like Oolong's uh, Fatal's uh, list. It's really good. Yeah, Simon's Quest is definitely high up there. Uh, I try, I'll, I'll pick some different ones. Um, how about the six-player X-Men Brawler from the arcade? Ooh, that was a good one too. The home version we got was four players. It was still cool, but the. Uh, Six players, just, it was like, it just blew my mind. I put so much time into that game. Uh, Spent so much money. One of the first dual analog games I could think of that that really made an impression on me, Virtual On. Mm. 
the mech game. The mech game, yeah. Sega Saturn, right? Mm -hmm. It was Sega Saturn, and then they also did it on Dreamcast, but the arcade version was, like, crazy. Like, remember when, Cy that was when, like, Cyber Sled came out, it was Virtual On, there were a few other, like, dual analog games. Like, they had, like, another one that was, like, a tank game. And it like, causes here. Oh, dude, like, I feel terrible. I forgot Nights into Dreams. Night since the dreams. I own that on like every system since it's come out. I might have to go with that too, just because of the epic boss battles and just the style of it and the music and yeah, it's like they recaptured that Sonic magic, but it didn't make just another Sonic game. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the that... feeling of flying was always cool. Yeah, yeah. Like even though it was on rails, you still felt like you had a lot of freedom. Like they did mm -hmm. a really good job. All right, absolute must that that has to be up here. Is Panzer Dragoon Saga possibly for me the best RPG ever made? Uh, I, I I love it. That that game definitely. And it's a shame that only a few people in the world got to play that because the U.S. release was only like twenty five hundred copies or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I had a copy and sold it like a fool because you know Dumb I was down. getting yelled at because we had too much junk and I thought right, I'll give this up. And I'm like, why did I do that? Well, that's what happened. <laughs> Women piss you off. You do the I know the secret of mana with the immortal boss is mysteriously missing. How did that? So that one I gladly <laughs> get rid of again and again and again. Dude, dude, <laughs> freaking, that was an hour and a half long boss battle. That should not be a thing. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Jesus Christ, more, uh, I threw my chair. More picks from chat. 91 Proof says, my favorite retro game is Chrono Trigger. Mm. Hands down. Mm-hmm. Um, BFT, 9000, my favorite retro game, Maximum Carnage on Sega Genesis. I like that game. That is a pretty good game. Dude, that is a really good game, and I had Sega. Oh, son of a so, bitch. So, with a uh, close, uh, close second being Diablo 1. Mm. I take it back, I do have a number one. Oh my god, you already said And it yours. wasn't even in my top five. <laughs> Damn it. And it wasn't even in your top five? No. Uh oh. Go ahead. Because I don't consider it retro. I play it all the time. Final Fantasy VI, Japan VI, America three. Eh, yeah. Retro. That was the yeah, one that went out of really Game retro, Boy. Though. Yes, it is. It's Hell dude, yeah, it was it on is. Super Nintendo. Oh, yeah. Super Nintendo, you played like twenty something different characters. Well, it's, it's one retro. of those it's one of those Wait. games that's been around for 40 fucking years and you just gotta yeah i thought america's three was the one that came out on game boy no america's three was with tara Locke, Saban, all oh, right edward i forget about final fantasy 2 legend remember that Shadow. one on game boy keep, baby <laughs> that the final fantasy 2 on the game boy was really freaking hard i got stuck in that game so much yeah before we had walked through i i have one more it's a it's a game called dragon force where it's like a, an anime style fighting game. Like imagine Dynasty Warriors meets Advanced Wars, right? Um, or and, and Street Fighter. That's the best description. Or Marvel vs. Capcom. You know how Marvel vs. Capcom has like like the insane combos and like over the top like uh, special moves. That's what this game did. Like, and you, when you defeated armies, you could recruit people from their armies, and they would join your army, and you take over territories and battle the other people, the other armies for defending those territories, and expand your your empire. It, it was insane, and still to this day, no one has made anything like that game that I could think of. Maybe Dragon Commander comes close, but still. Cz, what about you, man? Um, my number one most. Yeah, my number one retro game is the Zelda series. I used to play them all the time when I was little. But they give you a little challenge because I used to get stuck on them on all the time on like every quest you had to do. You had to sneak past monsters, get a whole bunch of supplies. It was just challenging. But the second one, Fatal already said, is 007 on the Nintendo. 64. I used to play that when I was little, and there was this cheat code that you could make all the heads of the enemies get real big, and it was just something funny to watch. Is that why you're good at headshotting uh, CSGO? <laughs> yeah, that's why. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> that's probably my only two. Definitely. See, y'all are showing y'all's age. 
how much money y'all's parents had to get the hotness. Some of us had to beg for the little dime store stuff we got. And trust me, grandma paid for it because I had the Coleco Vision. And she thought that yeah. was the hotness. I had the Texas Instruments TI-99 where I had to type in my games from a magazine that I bought yep. just to play them and had to hope they were okay. Hope. I had Legend of Zelda on the TI. Yeah, did you have to hand type it? Yes. <laughs> that and Tetris. But I, by God, it got me through math class. <laughs> <laughs> ah, those were the days. But see, I'm not hearing any of the, like, Cuberts, Stargate, Asteroids, Oh, I can go Galaga. back there. Hey, I haven't, hey, I haven't said, a... I haven't said my list yet. I beat Asteroids. I played, the longest session I ever did at Asteroids was about 15 hours, and I beat it several times over, like, to the point where the score reset to zero. I can tell you about Asteroids. Uh -huh. And I played almost every mode in there. Including the mode where the asteroids go invisible randomly. Ooh, that troll face. Missile yeah. Command, Defender, uh, Sword Quest. Uber, hell yeah. Zookeeper. Ooh, that was my joint in the arcades. Yes, and I played it in the arcades on a coin op machine. Listen, I'd be lying. You're not the only old one here. Oh, I know. I'm yeah. just saying, like, y'all went straight. I mean. I mean, I mean you went straight to the bro list. Like there was no girl that was gonna be anywhere in that list. But that's why you're no in the chat. How hard you tried. So that's why I had to go, hold up. <laughs> wait a minute. I didn't hear no frogger. Oh my lord, wait a minute. Donkey I still Kong. Hate Gosh, that was my joint. Donkey Kong's good, but I still hate Frogger. <laughs> frogger was awesome. How Me about and Frogger, frogger have an fun. issue? It's that, that's a long storied rivalry. I'm not. Nope. How about the tank, the tank game where you had like 50 different game versions, and one of the versions you could bounce your cannonballs off the edges, and it was two players. Remember that? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you bounce your little cannonball. Yeah. Like you had like little mazes of like yeah, walls. Yeah, they uh, remade that on the Wii on one of like it was like the Wii Play game. They remade it on that. It's really oh. fun. The one with a bunch of like little mini games in it? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. See, that makes me want to get a Nintendo platform. Like, they still know what it is to make fun games. Yeah. I got to give them that. Damn. That, that Nintendo, uh, what do they call it? The, 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 the Nintendo Remix? Is that what it's called? No, I have no clue. It's got like all the. I thought uh, so. Yeah, they take all the, like, a lot of the classic, like, like Retro City Rampage oh, yeah, they have yeah. in there. That's crazy. Ah. Uh. We used to play in game and <clears throat> when, you know, back in the day when computers were first invented, we used to play a game in high school when we were in computer class. It would be the, uh, you'd have, it's like the equivalent of the old, the first worms come out. Like you were, you oh, were tanks, sure. you were tanks and you Gorgeous. were on hilltops and you had to like angle your, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, you would scorched earth. Well, we all, we all used to play it cause all the computer class computers were linked. So uh, cool. we just all the got a precursor. On. The precursor to that Obi is uh, Gorilla. Yeah. And Basic. Mm -hmm. I used to hack up the Basic code and make my own version. I had nuclear bananas. So it was great. <laughs> hey Shadow. Destroyed. What about you, man? What's your favorite retro game? Did you just say nuclear bananas? That's right. Yes. <laughs> What's your favorite retro game, Shadow? Probably Zelda. Zelda? Zelda. Majora's Mask. It's mostly. Majora's Mask, you worm. <laughs> is I that... think I've put... What? Is that Andrew? Yes, it is. He's the one that yes. was yelling earlier, too. Scrub. Hi, Lord Rakdos. He's... I'm wearing headphones right now. <laughs> well, well call, tell, tell him, him what tell I him said. Hi. Tell him Scrub. <laughs> yeah. He's not <laughs> well, going to say I that. Think me and... And Rakdo was, was combined, put in like four months as of time in that game. Wow. Crazy. I'd be loud. What are some of the retro games? I know you, you said a bunch of you, you know, but what are some of your, what are your top five that you just love to play and still like to play if you could? I'd be loud. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong one. Hit the wrong button. I push the talk so you don't have to hear my 
um, people in the background. Um, I don't know if you guys would consider that the ones that I like because honestly, I really enjoyed the games as they got higher up. Like I was so excited when Dragon's Lair came out. Even though oh, yeah. it was like, you know, the, the, the cut scenes, but they were really trying to do something amazing with the Spaces. technology that Spaces. pushed it. Yeah, that, that pushed the envelope. So I loved that game just because there was nothing like it at the time and they had to work so hard just to figure out how to do it. And it was hard, but it had a story and it was engaging. Mm -hmm. um, I loved the Tron like cycle. It was rare to find one that you could actually sit on the light cycle. I think they only yeah. made so many of them. And uh, the view was, the one that you sat on, the view was literally as, like, you didn't see the overview. All you saw were the walls, which was really hard as hell. Um, then there was, uh, oh, gosh, what was my other favorite that I just loved? But if we go to the consoles... I didn't get a chance to play because most of the guys, when I would hang out and see them playing, you know, on the Ataris and stuff like that, um, when I tried to play, it wasn't necessarily the best at it because I didn't have one at home. So they'd hurry up and want me really quickly and be like, my turn, and then play with each other for hours. So I just got to watch. So yeah, that really wasn't my thing. Um, but PC gaming, um, there was another game like Leisure Suit Larry or a whole series of them where it described what you were doing. And then you typed in what you wanted to do next, and then it told you what happened. And uh, you know, you got you got to see like a little eight bit picture or whatever. So Are you talking about like Zork? Games. Yes. Nice <laughs> the shit. I love that nice. game. That was my Johnny. That was my thing. I love those because you had to think. Um, you know, and you heard. So, you know, I just. I really wish to like one day have enough money to have a gaming studio where you can bring back the best of those kind of games with some of the efficiency and not overkill, but some of the niceness that we can do now. So, so that, you know, kids these days can see what a game really is supposed to be about. I mean, if they don't like it, or okay, you want it spoon fed, go eat that Gerber baby food. This is, this is for gamers. You got to work. You gotta think. You gotta earn this. <laughs> you know, we're not just making something like, I'm sorry, Riot's not really a big friend of mine. That'll suck you dry just for a, a freaking skin while you're frustrated because you're never gonna get out of EOL hell, so that's how they make their money. Come on. Psh, come on. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, you know, it's really hard for me to talk about a lot of retro stuff because, um, I want to see that love now. You know, I, w I want to see it on what I can play now. I don't want to live yesterday because it wasn't a pleasant memory of like not having friends to play with. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely it does. It really does. Now, my list that I have, mine was kind of spoiled a little bit because some of my all time favorite games, Asteroid, Centipede. Um, um, oh, what was that? Space, co like, it's like Space Commander, where you had to go back and forth with, uh, I mean, these are almost all Atari games. Um, yeah, Atari was the boss. Um, was the guy and then, of course, my all time favorite, and still is because I still play it, is Super Mario Brothers. Um, I don't know why, and I don't know why I still play it. But I can get on there and I can sit there and go from one to eight in about three hours. Just not die. Bam, bam, bam. By the time I get up there, you got the little, the little, it's not a cheat. It's a, uh, what did I call it? I'm taking advantage of a, uh, well, anyway, it's the turtle that you can bounce around 99 times to get 99 lives and then run up the stairs and then go to the flag. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of a glitch, kind yeah. of. Yeah, glitch is a good, well. <laughs> it was <laughs> in the game with purpose. But it's it's a minor exploit. Yeah, there you go. That's the word I was looking for. Exploitation. Yes. <laughs> but those that's my five. I mean, I just I really like them. Um, I mean, I played the I put an ungodly amount of hours into into uh, Mario Brothers, and we I mean, in speaking of Mario Brothers, I'm talking like all of them, like 
um you know the paper mario that's come out the 3d mario the the mario stars mario i mean just everything i mean just the whole mario uh damn ba -deep, ba -deep, ba -deep. franchise it's all folks yep franchise not well not just the franchise but just the whole series of mario brothers super mario brothers one two and three and then you had super mario brothers all-stars then you had you know and then eventually mario kart came out and then they revamped a bunch of stuff made new stuff made paper mario then just all that other stuff that you know that hell i still like i said i still play freaking asteroids and our, our, I still play Centipedes. Come on. My mm -hmm. first game I ever, the first, it was asked before we started the show, well, what's your first game you ever played? And I'm going to ask this to you guys now. But my first game ever played was Pong. Three and a half hour game. Yep, but I couldn't go for three and a half hours. We did. I couldn't see the screen that well. <laughs> now to you guys, really flat, really fast. Uh, we'll start with Shadow. First game you ever played. Go. Don't remember. Ivy Loud. Pong. CZ. 007. Yogi Zilla. <clears throat> Pong. Pong. Lord Rakdos. First game you ever played. Fatal Blades. <laughs> All right. Uh, if we're counting PC... First game period. I don't oh care if you God. were two years old. First, not we has to be video game, but first game I was you say, ever like, played. First peekaboo was the first. No, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to say that. Peekaboo. I see. Uh, Actually, you know what? I think I played Space Invaders or Asteroids first. Yeah, I know I played Pitfall before Pong as far as console goes, but there was an old, uh, like dot based adventure game actually it'd probably be no it was uh hack hack would be the first game i played okay. oh wow lord rakdos yeah, are on, you here now PC. yeah i can't think of its name um it's an old arcade game you are a little spaceship and you go around in various shapes and shoot things that are coming up out of you and then you get uh, upgrades and you get like four missiles and then you get tracking missiles and all that other stuff uh no no, it's skill. You just run around the polygon and shoot the things coming up at you. Astro Tempest? Tempest! Oh, Tempest, The first Tempest, game I ever played yeah. was Tempest. Tempest, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, now... Yeah, yeah. Vector graphics, gotta love that. Mm -hmm. Um, we're, we're quickly running out of time already. <laughs> Go figure, we find something that we actually want to talk about we run out of time too mm -hmm. fast. Games, now the next thing that we're going to say real, real quick, and this is something that... Be a little bit quicker because we have a few more points I want to hit. Games that were made back then that are now played today, either by people have you know the other systems or remakes. Okay. Fatal Blade, you want to take off? Take it off or All right, start so it off. Games that were made back then and now have remakes. And play well that that were made back then and played. And that that are now being played now. That's including remakes and okay. You know, the other uh, Double Dragon, because Double Dragon Neo, uh -huh. amazing. Crap. Uh, what? It's an amazing game as long as you don't have Yogi's computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With uh. the invisible character models. Hey, this is hey. my temporary setup. <laughs> my the shadow cool. game is strong. All right, let's see. How about uh, Mega Man? Was a good one. The Ducktales remake, phenomenal. Uh -huh. Uh, Gauntlet, still made today. Newest one came out recently. Awesome game. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Mortal Kombat, which now had Mortal Kombat X recently. Uh, so many. Sonic always has a new remake, like every two seconds. I'd probably sneeze and there'll be a new remake. How yeah. dare you, sir? It's mask. Look, look, okay. Name a good Sonic I was game gonna say after that. Generations. Don't worry, I can wait. There is a... Sonic Colors. No, bullshit. Yeah, that just sounds hey. like some made up crap. Did I actually Fatal Blades. sneeze? Fatal Blades. <laughs> I, I got your back on this one, and I'm a chick, and even I know this one. You, you, you gonna lose. You gonna lose. Well, then say it. No, I'm saying like Fatal Blades is right. Like yeah. it ends. I know. It ended. <laughs> that market got so oversaturated, even sponges quit on that shit. 
I, I, I feel bad about SpongeBob it. SpongeBob became the oh. new Sonic. That's what I'm saying. Lord, Sonic Star Adventure Wars too. Star best. Wars too. Because we got the new Battlefront coming up, and I'm hype as hell. Right, Laura Rakdos. What about you? Games that were made back then and still played today. Um, Majora's Mask. A lot of the Zelda games have been remade. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what else. Doom. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, what else? <laughs> uh, there was a Serious Sam remake like, recently. All my, my brain is just filling up with Nintendo because that's what I played as a little kid. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, well, we'll let you think about that a few minutes. Uh, Yogi, just give us a couple because I know you could talk for hours on this subject. Period. So, give us some games that were made back then that are still played today. I was gonna ask: Has any did anybody ever play the Gauntlet Four Towers game? That was one of like the games that a lot of people missed. It was Gauntlet with like a little more depth to it. Like it had uh, RPG mechanics. I played mechanics. Gauntlet. Yeah, I know that one. That that'll go more into the uh, forgotten forgotten games of the retro era. Oh, okay. Because, oh, I didn't see that either. Because it's gonna be it's gonna be like uh, that was a game that I played too with a buddy. I never owned it or anything, but that was a game that I played too with my buddy. And I never see it. Like, I can't find it anymore. I can't. Something that what I a... wanted to have. They're you know, still making... Uh, I hear they're still making Madden games. They're up to, what, uh, number 51 or something? Well, they're, the, the, the last Madden uh, that <laughs> came out was, like, Madden 25 or some shit. Yeah, that's what it was. It yeah. was uh, yeah. Madden 25. E EA's gonna, EA just announced they're going to make three of them a year. Whatever. And uh, if if you are lucky and you get the one with the golden ticket inside of it, you get a uh, football player to give you a back massage, <laughs> or rub your his booty in your face. One of your choice. Is the only one player Damn, too much booty in the pants. Damn, too much booty in the pants. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's on but, your face. Uh, so, so games are made back then that are playing now. There's a lot of spiritual successors that come to mind. Like there used to be a game called Desert Commander and Advanced Wars makes you think of that. Uh, trying to think what else like Mega Man kind of lives on at twenty XX and uh, Mighty Number no. Nine. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I could go on for a while, but I, I'm, I'm right. I'm just gonna I'm gonna stop right there. CZ, how about you, man? The, I know one game that when I was little I played all the time, and they're still making games of it. It's uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There's still there, making games. There's a, making movies. There's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Isn't that coming out here? Yep. Later this year? The new game is yep. coming out. All right. Um, how about I'll Be Loud? What about you? Um, Actually, they've done a reboot of Pong where it's got, like, boosters and different stuff, and mm -hmm. it's kind of it's chill. It's mostly a Flash game. I've seen it in an arcade game you know, reboot just for nostalgic purposes, people who, you know, um, restore old vintage machines and it was dope. Right. Super dope, yo. Shadow? Do you think of any Deus games? Ex. What? Deus X. I thought he said day sex. I'm like, what? Everyone well, <laughs> thinks that. <laughs> yeah, Deus that's what sex? I was about to say. Day you what? Yeah, they're still making new versions, in, and the time and stream in it and all the games is still a little confusing. That's making the, one, the games uh, backwards. The last one they released was Human Revolution, and what's the new one? Uh, what's the new one they just they revealed in E3? You no, know, do you know what it's called? The no. last one they released was Human Revolution. Okay. Not off the top of my head, and I'm playing in Human Revolution right now. I think it's Rebellion, maybe? It's the one where you're, set, you're forced to go to the ghetto. <laughs> you're, like, you're some kind of like operative, and you go to the ghetto, and everybody wants your super, your cyber augmentations because they're too broke to get their own. Mankind divided. Mankind divided, there you go. I would not have guessed that. Yeah, that's, what, that's why it's divided, because everybody's like, all, uh, there's a lot of upheaval. Everyone's either no augments at all, or everyone's like, just augment the crap out of yourself. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, a, f a few games that I I didn't hear at all. Now, um, Sonic the Hedgehog remakes, uh, the Mario Brothers, all of them. I mean, with the, Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon's yeah, Pokemon. another good one. Uh, Donkey Kong, they did remakes. They did uh, remakes of DuckTales. A lot of the Atari games, they're actually doing remakes to where, not remakes, but maybe uh, like touch-ups, I guess you could call them, to where they're making the fine points, you know, making them a little bit running running a little bit better on the newer consoles um let's see street fighter is another one that they keep making remakes of yeah. tekken is another one um the uh mike was it mike tyson's punch out that was the <laughs> one that was kind yeah. of uh did they do they just did a remake of that and of course the the mega man metal gear uh is is kind of one but it's kind of teetering on the you know, because it was PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, you know. Yeah, Boo Tekken, that's what we all say. That started on the NES, though. The Metal, Metal Gear? Gear. So the Metal Gear? Yeah, Metal Gear, the original Metal Gear and Snake's oh. Revenge were on NES. Yep. But yep, yep, suddenly yep. it became a PlayStation game, as all people know. It's like, Metal it's Gear like the, solid. the same people that, you know, think Kanye West uh, put... Uh, What's his face? Uh, Paul McCartney on the map because like he was a no name before him. Like, wow, what did you just? Were you just born or something? What's going on here? <laughs> I mean, Paul McCartney put Kanye West on the map. Got it. Could could you say Dragon Ball Z is? People still play that. Yeah, he said ten can. Oh. Um. But uh, but yeah. Uh, damn, I didn't lost all track of thought. Um, but. But anyway, with this point being <clears throat> basically done, what I'm trying to, what we're trying to do is, is these are still a bunch of games that are played all the time, and this is by, um, by either we're seeing people playing, we're seeing these, you know, these streams, these tournaments, even with Street Fighter and Tekken, I see a stream on Twitch all the freaking time of tournaments going on, and then you got these huge freaking lap controllers and with eight buttons and a joystick and then toggles and all that other. Sh I mean, dude, lots of money going into these retro games. Don't forget the speed lo speed runner love. Yeah, speed runners love. Um, a couple more questions, you guys. One more for you guys. I want one game that you can think of that is the most unforgiving retro game that you have ever played. Fatal, your last because you have a good one. Shadow. Is there a game that you played that was an old game that you just could not beat? I be loud. How about you? On oh, Metro Eight. Same. Met Both of us what? worked on that for two years and never beat it. What was it? What? Metroid, really? Well, it wasn't mm. the first Metroid. Metroid Two. Rumble. Echoes. Oh, okay. Those were a little tougher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We even had the guidebook and we couldn't beat it. <laughs> we had the freaking cheat book. <laughs> right. I be loud. How about you? I know you didn't play a lot, but is there a game that you found that you just could not beat? Oh no! I mean, I played for hours. I just had to play by myself. So, mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to think of the ones <clears throat> that I could actually play by myself. This is kind of dirty, but I'm gonna say I would have played with you. Was, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> really dirty. Everybody though. wants to play with me now. Um, <laughs> let's see. Ah. Uh, I really could never get to where I wanted to on Tempest. Oh, yeah. That thing gave me the freaking bends. My daughter can just annihilate it with her thumbs on her phone. And I had a full standing, not even near as much distraction, and a spinner. And just, it used to, oh. <laughs> All right. CZ, how about you, man? Uh, I don't know if anyone said this yet, but the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, me and Fatal were talking about this earlier, the uh, water level. Yeah. <laughs> BFT was... actually said that in chat as well. BFT He's like, said it in the chat, yeah. T oh, T TM no, you're fine with that. No, you're fine with that. TMNT on NES, uh, the was... swimming level was a yep. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <beep. laughs> Don't hear that shit in my nightmares. 
<laughs> oh, that's... Yeah, you were getting electric electrocuted from seaweed. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Like operation uh, with shit. How about controls. how about you, Yog? Ah, <laughs> uh, gosh. The most un most unforgiving game. That uh There's a lot of them. One I would have to give uh some props to on the NES was uh was Mission Impossible, because that thing was pretty much impossible. And if a character died, that's it. He's dead. You're not getting him back. Yep. Uh, so that was pretty brutal. Which one? Um, which one what? Which Mission Impossible? The one on the NES. Shit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if you want to go mine. further back, I tried 2600. <laughs> I think it was also ColecoVision and the television. The uh, Matsuzuma's Revenge. That game was a freaking yeah, bitch. Yeah, that was hard. People talk about Pitfall, but Matsuzuma's Revenge. It's like, you guys, uh, you guys knew me back then. You would have known why I'm so raging right now because of that fucking game. <clears throat> Fuck this game! Hey, don't throw your controller. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Big Dog got pretty ridiculous. Like the further you went into it, but I, I, I guess you can't really count like uh. Those kind of games that are more arcadey, you know, because they just, they do feel like they speed up, they keep recycling stages, and they might speed up the enemies and add some extra things here and there, but it's all kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. recycled stuff, you know what I mean? Whereas, I do. Like the stage based games, as I try, to, that's what I think about more of a set challenge, because then this is more of a sense of progression, whereas everything else is more about improving your Twitch reflexes and, your, you know, your reaction time and whatnot. Right. Uh, so, I don't know. Mission Impossible is definitely up there because in Mission Impossible, you know, I, I, I guess it doesn't really count as a, as a spoiler. You go through these crazy puzzle solving things. Like, you go through these pedestrian areas where you don't know who's the enemy and who's not. And all of a sudden, like, the sweet old lady that you're walking by punches you in the back of the head. Like, oh, that's a bad guy. Great. So, like, there's some degree of memorization that will help you, but sometimes it's like crazy RNG. Then, when you finally get through the game and you figure out which agent is the best and what, and where you which where, when you should switch in which places and everything, the final boss includes some of the worst tropes in video games, including disappearing floor, slash shrinking level, uh, uh, overly aggressive and overly touchy ninjas, closed it, closing in walls, uh, <clears throat> closing in walls, uh, random explosions that you can't predict, and then last but not least, the world's biggest asshole playing you in chess. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and it's Hal. He comes from from back from outer space, and he plays you in chess. And yeah. Well, and I'm. Gonna, and then the timer on top of it too. Yeah, that that was. And I'm gonna be honest with everybody. That's the game that I was gonna pick. <laughs> was Double O Seven or uh, Mission Impossible by the NES? Uh, just because I I've never beat it. I never ever. Sonic Hedgehog is another one. I've never ever beat one. I could beat two. Really? Yeah, I can. I cannot beat. It's one of the. It's like the last boss almost, where you gotta you know run up and then you gotta actually, like, I don't even remember how to actually do it. But I, every time I do that second jump to get on top, I hit him first time, no problem. But then he'd do some crazy shit, and I would always it would like glitch out and I would die. So, anyway, Fatal Blades. You still sound salty about it. I am salty as fuck about it. Right <laughs> I, I've got a list of the crappiest games. Well, we 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 only, try and beat. we don't have much time left, so that's fine. Don't worry, I'll rattle them off quick. Go. Ghouls and Ghosts on the NES. Fucking mm -hmm. impossible. Jaws. Friday the Thirteenth on the NES. Both of those can kiss my ass. <laughs> yeah, oh, but God. that was bad Battle development. Toads? That has never nothing to do it. with it. Like I never beat Battle Toads either. A game thing. Because they just the developers just hated your guts. Like I spent two years learning how to get past the speeder bikes, and then there's a bullshit snake tunnel level that can kiss my ass. I love that part. <laughs> oh well, that's just right. great. Keep going. <laughs> All right, let's see. If we're counting emulations, uh, Impossible Mario can kiss my ass. If we're not counting emulations, <laughs> I think the original Contra with just three lives and Mike Tyson was some bullshit. Yeah. Um, in Mike Tyson's Punch Out, he was he was a jackass. He was like you you couldn't even you couldn't beat him. You'd have to have everything max and then hope to God you could dodge his punches. And yeah. of course, the immortal. Uh, 
Secret of Mana boss. <laughs> yeah. But a couple more guys. We got about uh, well, about five minutes left in the show, so everybody's gonna get about thirty seconds to answer. What is a forgotten gem of the retro era? I know we're gonna start with Yogi Zilla right in the middle, go down C Z, and then Lord Ragdolls will be last. Yogi. So yeah, and I got like I said earlier, uh, the I mean Gauntlet's still going, but the one installment of that game that I think a lot of people missed was uh, I think it was called the Four Towers, and mm. you had a boss. You had, actually had a boss battle. They, they changed the formula so much from the original game that it was just like whoa, they weren't ready for it. Uh, and then it wasn't like what was it? Uh, the whole the whole trope was uh, uh they need food, <laughs> you know that whole thing. Need more mana. <laughs> I love yeah. that, uh, but this game was like complete. Like it, it still felt like Gauntlet, but they had like you actually bought gear. Like you had a, like a, a town area you'd go to, and then from that town you go to one of the four towers, and it, each tower represented a different. Um, maybe it might have been the five towers. There was four elements, and then the fifth tower was like the final challenge, and then it became Gauntlet again, where you went to different areas, different floors, clearing a bunch of enemies. But they had that extra layer of like Fortune. leveling up. And getting gear and that was really cool and, and then of course you know four player co-op what's there not to love about that right uh, great game and, and and you know what and it's and they had uh another thing that we kind of lost in, in the shuffle uh secret areas you know and that sense of discovery and exploration right definitely uh cz what about you man forgotten gems of the era if you played any all right i'd be loud how about you? Leisure Suit Larry. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Allo, yo, what's up? <laughs> I know you listen to our, to our podcast, dog. Let's go. Make another one. For real, I would love is it, still, dude. Is he still alive? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Sierra's trying to make a comeback as a studio now. Supposedly. Shadow, what about you, buddy? No idea. No idea. Fatal. Uh, okay, for American made, I would say Evo on the Super Nintendo. It oh, really, wow. It was really good. You started as like just a little fish creature, and then you would use evolution points to go higher and higher and higher until you were eventually just really amazing. For an import, there was a game called Bahamut Lagoon, which was a tactical game with a Final Fantasy style fighting system and a sandbox building mechanic on the Super Nintendo. Well, Super Famicom, because it was only in Japan, didn't come to America, but you can still find the translation uh, em uh, emulation, which is phenomenal. Definitely. Lord well, Rakdos. <laughs> Lord Rakdos, what about you? Uh, forgotten gems or forgotten games that people kind of played but then just stopped. Or just games that people really didn't hear about. Of the retro era. Uh, I don't know if this really counts as retro, mm. but Zelda Minish Cap. Ooh, That's it was like game. it was, but no one really heard or anything about it. It was like one of the least hyped or, or hated Zelda games, and I think it's one of my favorite. Yeah, um, the one that I <laughs> and and somebody else basically just threw this out there? Question mark? Question mark? 91 proof says Tenchu. Uh oh, for yes, that was the again Tenchu somebody took my assassin. somebody took yeah. my freaking answer again, but that's the game I played. I played hours and hours of and I was like, "Hey, are you playing this game?" Like they're like, "What game?" Like they never nobody ever heard of it. And like yeah, it just it... I mean, you had to like actually go get it and like or see a friend play it cuz I got one. I mean, everyone that can Yeah, I love you too, buddy. There's none. There's, I mean, the 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 sequels that came out after. I got those too, uh, just because it's just stealthing around and you're a ninja. You stay in the shadows. You can kill anybody silently. And then they threw in stars and darts and oh come on, it's op as shit. It was Assassin's Creed before Assassin's Creed. Basically, yes, and that's why I like Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yes. All right. What games? Here's a couple guys. Again, thirty seconds. What retro game have fallen out of favor? Fatal Blades. 
Uh, for me, the biggest biggest ones were like uh, the Monster Rancher series, which I covered with you. Mm-hmm. You know, they were really big. They had their own cartoon show and everything. And now, really, you never hear anyone talk about them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, like uh, Fighting Vipers back in the day, I thought was really good. That kind of just disappeared. There, there were quite a few. Um, I don't want to take everyone else's answers though. So. Got it. I should Re- never start with me. <laughs> Lord Rectus, what about you? I can't think of anything. The things I've played are still played, okay. or at least by me. Um, I'm going to go with, <clears throat> even though it's starting, they're starting to do a little bit, you know, with commercials with this uh, game now, um, I'm going to just have to say Crash Bandicoot. Like, it was really popular when it was when it came out, and they were like, oh, this is cool. You know, but now, like, people just don't play it anymore. Like, it's sitting in my closet right now in, in the the storage box with all the rest of the games. Just don't play it. Yogi? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I think I uh, my blanket laugh. statement will be pretty much anything Capcom and Konami are allowing to rot away because they're just too busy milking other properties or... Uh, Mickey Pachinko Machines, or whatever they're doing. That was the nicest way I've ever heard anyone say Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> CZ, how about you, man? I be loud. Centipede. Centip- Damn. Aww, Girl. yeah. Good answer. That was- I'm sorry. <clears throat> I thought it was a decent game. I was waiting for them to come out with the sequel and just really take it to the next level. Yeah, I just, it kind, it, I kind it, of, I kind of feel some way about it, like for real. It kind of lives on uh, Zuma or Bust a Move, kind of, sort of. Again, like I said, <laughs> I can't wait until I can get me a stack of money and seriously take some seriously good classic games. Like, match threes are normally boring as hell, but I happen to love the way Gummy Drop does it and just really make people go, damn. And it's like, yeah, you don't know what a gamer is. You you don't know. You're going to learn today. <laughs> All right, CZ's, gonna learn. CZ's back. CZ, what about you? Yeah, uh, I don't really have one. Yeah. You know? No? Okay. Plus, Breakdance Revolution counts as one. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty new, isn't it? <laughs> no, it, it, I don't actually know. Like eleven years ago. Wait, was... what are we talking? Dance, dance? No, break dance revolution. Like the old, you go. You would have to go and buy the old uh, platform. It was yeah, like like the one in the arcade. Yeah, but it was like a homemade one. Yeah, I've that never was... seen that game. There you go. Fatal Blade exactly. learned something new. I'm going to have to look that up. Shadow, what about you, man? A retro game that just kind of fell out of favor after it was released. Missile oh, oh, Command. Say that again? Missile Command? Missile Command. Nice. Nice, nice. Nice pick. Nice, nice pick. That was a game that I, I did play a little bit, but I just didn't see any. You know, eh, it's Especially fun. nowadays, is it's just like... You know, too complicated for or get errors nowadays. Mm-hmm. Last thing, guys, this is something that we kind of talked about a little bit already before. Where did retro meet modern? In your point of view, Shadow, how about you? Hmm. <laughs> He's still stuck on uh, Mr. Command. Yeah. <laughs> Too I'd strong. Be... Oh. Yeah, right. I'd be loud. Where did, where did retro meet modern? Oh, yeah. Like I said, as soon as, we, as soon as I had to say goodbye to my Dreamcast, like I literally just couldn't keep it because, you know, I had to move up with the times and go Xbox, mm-hmm. Xbone. I, I, I pretty much kissed vintage goodbye. You know, kissed... The good dames of gaming goodbye because the only two games I could really see myself enjoying and playing on a regular basis on my Xbox. Uh, I did Dead or Alive because that was my daughter. She totally, if she wasn't playing with me, she was completely GTA, which broke my heart. But 
It was the built-in babysitter and made her happy. So what could I do? And <laughs> I played Hexic. Well, it was one of those things when you're a single mom and you're the bad guy all the time. Like you're always the bad guy. So your kid feels like they don't have another parent to really talk to, to balance it out. I got us a video game system. So she'd go down and like, you know, beat some hoes and shoot some cops <laughs> and, you know, wreck some cars and she'd feel 10 times better. Like she'd be like all just happy again. Like, you know, oh, sit there and look great. at her friends and be totally gangster. And I'm just like, it, hey, it perked her up. She was happy. That kid did homework. She was, get, you know, she was, she was in advanced <laughs> classes. All I had to do was, was just drop about what a whole, Tax return to get her a 46 inch television, the Xbox with all the utilities, and you know, the chargers and everything. And you Can didn't you even be my mommy? that kid. <laughs> I'm serious, you know, I, mommy likes toys, but um, whoa, if, but see me, <laughs> that, is the, that escalated quickly, very <laughs> quickly. <laughs> mama likes toys, there you yeah, go, especially handheld. You're not I'm getting sorry. It. Oh, oh my, <laughs> she does got it anyway. <laughs> Before no, I got it as soon as I said it. Was the truth. But no, I played Hexic. No, what I was trying to say is I played on my Xbox, the game I played for hours uh -huh. and hours was Hexic. Oh, yeah. I spent all that money just to play Hexic. <laughs> Live for that game. CZ, how about you, man? Um, <laughs> wow. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we have IB Loud on the show, um, everybody. Uh, I don't really have. I don't really. I don't know. When did retro meet modern? Oh, um, I don't know if you would count this, but when I used to play my Game Boy all the time, like throughout the night when I was supposed to be sleeping and everything, I'd be playing it. And then when I got my Xbox, it just changed everything. Mm, okay. And uh, Yogi, when did Xbox meet modern? I thought it was when retro met, met, met or, modern. Yeah, when Xbox. Wow. When did retro meet modern? Jesus, Someone's got stop it. Xbox on their mind. I do. I don't want to talk about it right now. I might Derp. be getting one, so leave me alone. <laughs> all right. I, I, all right. I, I really like how they have new models of old systems being made by fans, like that wood, that wood grain Super Nintendo that I think they're selling now. And so they're, they're starting to produce in small quantities. Mm -hmm. But it's got like the. It's even got shellac on it. Like, what? Damn. I know people are going to sna snatch that up. It's like, it looks like you're looking at a tree stump, but it looks legit. <laughs> um, you know, and then you got the Retron 5, you know, and all these other systems that let you play old games or emulate them or play the original cartridges and all that stuff. Right. But you know what I miss? I miss the freaking little handheld. Like Tiger games, or like take it further back, the two like when it started to get fancy, they had like the two screen black and white LCD games that if you were dumb and you like dropped it, that all that black stuff would just go all over the place. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Play Donkey Kong on 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 the dual like the dual screen and flip it open. Like this is a precursor to the DS if you think about it. So back to and the it, question, where did retro meet modern? Where, where, all right, so, I mean, I, I was talking about Leave some of the cross. Leave it to Yogi to get lost going down the street. No, I'm just, the you, got me, the you got me reminiscing. Come on, you can't talk about retro. I do freaking retro Friday. I know you do. That's Make why I wanted you on this show. To remember. Every now and again, retro Friday does Yogi. We've seen that, too. Yeah, that's funny. Oh. Oh, I'm not taking that shot. I'm gonna just leave it right where yep, it's Yep, you need to. I think the, I, I would say that the cusp of modern gaming as we know it today and what most would consider retro i would say sega saturn ushered that in okay yeah that's that's where the real turning point was because it was at the peak of the fifth generation but it wasn't quite a sixth generation system right you know it, it was 32 bit but it had some shortcomings you know they didn't perfect the tech but they, you know, they were they were leading the pack, so they didn't have the best tech. But everybody saw what they did, said that's a good idea. Let's do that, but like do it better, you nice. know. And that's what Sega did, like you know, for a little while. And unfortunately, people copied them and then just kept one upping them. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bitter about it. I'm sorry, I'm a Sega <laughs> fanboy. 
I'm going to uh, have to go with myself. Like I said earlier, I'm going to have to go with PS1. Um, because when the PS1 came out, it was starting to get to where the, the graphics were, were getting, you know, more, were starting to climb up, um, went from the, you know, the 62 bit to the 32, the 16 to the 32 bit. And then the higher end, you know, with PS1 being the 32 and, or was it 64? PS1 was 32 bit. Cause I remember that shit written. Yeah. Down. So it was, it was written on par on the with the six. The Sega Saturn. Yeah, so, um, so like, you know, the, the PS1 and the uh, Sega Saturn, because of, you know, the, the Sega Saturn had that cool controller that we never seen. Uh, the PlayStation 1 had, you know, you had the dual analogs with, you know, and then it started getting, the graphics started getting better for certain games that came out. And I think that's where uh, it's kind of retro met the modern era. Lord Rakdos, what about you, man? I'd say either the PS1 or the Cube. Okay. Fatal? I have a different take on this, but I would say, <laughs> for me, the place where retro meets modern is the independent game market. We still see Ooh. retro style games made right. in the modern day, and I think it's probably the best mashup of the two is seeing that as far as where one took over the other i would say modern gaming took over retro gaming um you know what screw it i'm gonna say different than all of you modern gaming took over retro gaming the second nintendo tried to make the virtual boy <laughs> damn a uh, couple in chat i know bft is uh disagreeing with yogi gamecube isn't retro that's the generation that was solid into the modern generation of games. I love GameCube, so please don't be angry. No, the GameCube uh, came after the Sega Saturn anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I just said. Wait, he just, how's, he, how's he disagreeing with me? GameCube isn't retro, is what he said. It's the generation that's solid into the modern. Like he said, it's, it's basically, it's, it was in nothing about... Actually, but I don't I, even know what the hell he's saying. Actually, I was gonna say, how's that disagreeing now, with now me? That I, I said, now that I, I read said it, that it changed after the times. Sega Saturn. Okay, well, it, okay. The, the I mean, the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation One were basically mm -hmm. on the same level. The thing is with the PlayStation is that they focus more on the polygon power, yeah, and well, and it, the Sega Saturn was optimized for two D graphics. Like it had the most beautiful sprites you could see. Right. Well, and BFT know? did say earlier N sixty four PS one era, uh, ninety one proof, uh, uh, sixty four. Uh, of course, you like you know the Super Mario sixty four. Um, somebody said the Wii. Yeah, no. <laughs> that was me. It was because it was, uh, my first game console was the GameCube. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I got, oh, the okay. yeah, then I got a PS three. Yeah. That's why, and I said. So you went from that, GameCube yeah. to Wii, which is kind of you know understandable, but then you, you went to the PS three games. Yeah, I still play GameCube games, but I don't play Wii, Wii games. Oh, okay. Mainly because our, our Wii has said, no, I don't want to play any games. Got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Guys, unfortunately, again, this is the time where we have to get offline, or we Dang. have to stop the stream. It's Ooh. been, yes, it's... We've been rolling for almost two hours. This is a freaking awesome episode. I really want to appreciate and thank you, everybody in the in the in the stream or in the in the channel here on Teamspeak, Fatal Blades, Lord Ragdos, Yogizilla, CZ, I Be Loud, and Shadow Wolf. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and talking a little bit of retro gaming. Now later this month, um, we're gonna have one more this month, and um, we're gonna probably talk a little bit a little bit deeper into retro gaming. Um, on, you know, kind of, you know, into the deep end, like, uh, uh, you know, like, I, like I be allowed likes to get. So she's going to probably be back with us. I'm more than likely Yogi and fatal. I, I'm sure everybody's going to be back. So unless I have something to do, but you guys, thank you very much for, for, for watching guys. We do want to make sure that if you guys want to see or listen to this in the future, minus today, if you guys aren't live, you guys want to download it, do whatever you guys want to do, go to youtube.com, Geeky Antics, of course, right here on twitch.tv is where we are live. If you guys want to see and hear the videos, we are, um, we're still putting them on Stitcher, and um, I believe iTunes still. Is mine on iTunes or just Stitcher? Both. 
Yes, both. So Stitcher and iTunes. But, guys, here on Geeky Antics Network, we have tons of shows covering a wide spectrum of all topics. We can't possibly plug all the full podcast lineup because there's so many. But you guys can go to geekyantics.net for slash scheduling. Um, right now, if you guys want to join, this is the best time. We're looking for writers, podcasters, anything and everything geeky, guys. We want to see you guys, and we want to know what you guys and awesome ge- and other awesome geeks think. So let's collaborate together and just have some fun. If you want to email us, you guys can email us at mail at geekyantics.net. We'll be one x 2 at geekyantics.net. Or you guys can leave us a voicemail. That's 206-415-4987. And be in mind, that is a U.S.-based uh, number. So if you are out of the, the U.S., be, be advised that you're going to get charged. So, But, guys, you guys want to say anything before we get out of here? Fatal plug yourself? Doesn't sound right. I'm good on that. <laughs> Hard pass. Plug it. Pass. Guys, check him out at Fatal Blades, at Yogizilla, and uh, I Be Loud. I'm going to let you uh, uh, yell yourself out because you have a couple of them. I am I Be Loud coming to you live and in person over the internet from Gods of Mayhem online. Just go to Gods of Mayhem because, you know, when I'm I'm doing my, my square thing, my alter ego as a normal person, yeah, I, I, be, I be weird. You say it on God's mayhem, you can be as freaky as you like. Love ya! Lord Rakdos. He's not his computer right now. All right. But he didn't use my my mic. I'm Lord Rakdos. Anywhere you care to find me. All right. That's at Lord Rakdos. You guys check him out. Uh, Yogi, you want to put off any something you're doing in the next couple days? No? Um, uh, You can find me. At Sweaty Armpits on Twitter. Uh-huh. I mean, at, at Yogizilla. I'm going to look that up. I'm going to look that up. I bet you that's taken already. I'm sure. I, I, I have nothing to do with whatever that is on Tumblr or Twitter. I'm sure it's out there. And I apologize in advance. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Yogizilla everywhere. And uh, right now I've been working on uh, integrating uh, Facebook and then Twitter and Google into uh, geekyants.net so people can log in with that. And there's sort of neat little features in there, like you could go into someone's profile and see the stream of all their activity, like all their forum posts and the comments that they leave on the site. Nice. And you can like, like them and share them in other places or reply to them all from one little stream. Uh, we're working on a new podcast feed and some launches on the po- on, in podcasts, so stay tuned for that. And of course, you know, when I'm not doing the PC thing, you know, podcasting or playing Heroes of the Storm or Hearthstone, uh, which I usually play on mobile these days, on that tavern bro. I got, you know, we got to get off here. I got to play more on that tavern bro before it goes offline. Got like a few hours left in that. On that day, I'm, I'm on Xbox Live playing Destiny or Titanfall or, I don't know, there's lots of other games. I'm not going to mention them all. Yogi Zilla. Yogi Zilla on Xbox Live. You, you going to challenge me on Tavern Brawl? Because I'm about ready to do that. I don't think you challenged it, but I'll take yes, the challenge. Yes, you can. All right. Challenge the challenge. I'm going to accept it for him. Go ahead. Challenge accepted. <laughs> they want us to get cams going. Yeah, yeah. Challenge uh, accepted. We usually, we usually do cams. Yeah, we don't. I think we greeted, I think we greeted, greeted everybody in the chat except Drixu. I don't think we said what's up to Drixu. We did. We did. I, I did we, say okay. hi to him. Um, but everybody, oh! again. Another Destiny player. <laughs> You know what? You see that, Obi? Stop! What the <laughs> hell? All right. <laughs> anyway, guys, I love you guys. Thanks to everybody in chat for hanging out. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Peace. <laughs> God Later. Damn. And we're out. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> All right, guys, if you want to be a part of this geeky gang, check us out at geekyantics.net. Don't forget to leave a voicemail, 206-415-4987. We'll see you guys later. Peace.